Okay, thank you. I hope yep. people can come, uh, yeah, after a while because we send out a lot of uh, invitations and we have a lot of answers and registrations. I hope they can make it by today. Okay, all right, let's get started. So before uh, Rachel's lecture, let me introduce uh, what is Bay Coding Club. We are a leading K-12 uh, technology education in Silicon Valley. And um, we uh, bring cutting edge of computer science education to the students all around the world. And uh, we offer different kinds of computer science like art, uh, creativity course, or um, the clubs for KSH from five to 17. And we also have a lot of competitions um, courses such as uh, Reusical and ACSL. And you may log on our website at baycodingclub.com and to know more information or call us at our um, numbers that I will show you later. So our team, as maybe you may know, that are including the senior technology and education experts who work at like such as Google, Apple, Stanford University, MIT, and uh, the MIT students, of course, Rachel is the students uh, in computer science at MIT and other top tech companies. And we teach uh, in English, most of English, we, know, we have no Chinese right now, but we're about to do the Chinese uh, course, um, yeah. And this is our um, um, roadmap of our um, established from uh, 2015. And right now we are at uh, Silicon Valley and uh, we move all our off offline courses um, on, on set uh, from online during the pandemic. So everybody knows there's, yeah, the hard difficulties. So this is me. Uh, actually, I'm a mom and actually, um, yeah, uh, I work at an information technology field for more than 20 years. Um, and I have a 10 year old daughter and she love uh, Python and she been taking um, ACSL and she um, got one full score once only. Okay. All right, uh, so we have a lot of online programming courses such as um, musical, Python, Java, a lot of uh, um, fun games like game designs, Roblox, Minecraft, Scratch, a lot. And we do have summer camp. Uh, this, this time we have the second round of summer camp is on and we're about to open our third round of summer camp for the people at Eastern world. And we provide group classes and semi-private classes and one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, if you want to know more information, just log on our web website. This is one of the pathways that we made by students. So we know students are very unique. So they have their own purpose to learn something. So uh, if you're registered on our website, uh, our um, course, and then we will make the pathways for you. So just uh, know more information, though, then you can log on our website or call us. So. We made a lot of pathways for different kids. Some kids are really like design. So we make the pathway for them to artful design paths and they, they want to learn some web design and then we give them the pathways also. All right. Um, oh, this is our summer camp. We have the basic summer camp and we have some of the advanced and the intermediate computer language summer camp for like Python, Java, for kids from five um, and to nine and 13. And we do have specialized uh, of the special camps such as math, musical, auto CAD and ACSL and cybersecurity and Unity 3D uh, game design. Okay, this is our uh, information that uh, if you want to contact with us, just send us the email info at baycodingclub.com and or call us at this number. Okay, thank you so much for coming and let's welcome Rachel. Let me introduce Rachel. Rachel right now is the staff of Bay Coding Club and she taking charge of the social media and she is the computer science um, student at um, MIT. And she is really um, familiar with Java, Python and she been taking the IFRC before and she uh, helped girl who code at the organization. So right now I give the time to Rachel. 
Hi, Rachel, it's your turn. Yep. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm going to share my screen right now. So today we're just going to do a quick introduction to programming in Java. So this is going to be like a one hour crash course on like on the basics of Java and to help you guys like, take the first steps into learning programming. Okay, so a quick introduction. So what, what Ruby said, I'm going to be an incoming freshman at MIT next year, and I'm very passionate about computer science. I have a lot of experience with Python or Java, and also like game design using like, the Uni engine. If you learn about, about all of those topics, if you decide to take any classes at Bacon Club. So what are we going to be doing today? Um, like I said before, we're going to just, I'm just going to give you guys a quick tour about Java and get, teach you guys some basics that's important in any program language and not just Java, but then I'm going to teach you how to actually use Java to make some like simple games that you might want to explore and just see if you have any interest in programming. So let's dive right in. What, first, we're going to start off with explaining what is programming. So programming, like before we ever start coding, we need to understand what programming is. And it's something when we like write code, we're trying to tell the computer what to do. And in order to tell the computer to complete a simple task, we have to give simple and specific instructions for the computer. Example, if you want to make a robot to make a pb and j sandwich, we can't just be like, get the bread. We have to have simple instructions like, well, how to move your arm, what the location of the bread is, and like the time and the other steps you need, need to make to actually make a sandwich. Like programming basically use computers to, in order to complete a set of tasks. So in this case, some tasks that previous people have been have made to actually to have completed to do programming are uh, here you can see that Hamilton used her code to actually send people to the moon, or you could even use programming to generate art, as you can see right here. So if some people have that have no artistic ability like me, can use code to actually create art pieces. And here's some other cool things you can do with Java before you even do anything complicated like sending people to the moon. So I'm gonna show you a game called Maze Runner. It's right here. And this is something called Eclipse, which is basically a program where you can use code, which, which is shown here, to complete something. And don't be, don't be scared from looking at all of this code, because when I first started learning programming, everything is super confusing. And I was so worried that I might not even understand be able to do anything. So if any time during this meeting you have any questions or you ever thought like, oh, what is this girl talking about? You can always just type in your question in the chat or even just type repeat. Or you can unmute yourself and tell me to repeat while I explain a topic again. So in this case, I have a game called Maze Runner. If I run it, like actually start a program using this um, stop button right here, you can see something like this print out. So this game is called Maze Runner and the X is your current location. And to, in order to move around the maze, you have to input either R, L, U, or D to, to tell the computer the direction you want to move at. So in this case, if I want to move right, I just type in R and click enter and you can see that the X moves right. So this is a simple program that you that we can start building after this um, demo like crash course class. And if you just keep typing in interactions, you can just keep moving. And in this game, there's something called pits, where if you want to jump over a pit, you could just type in Y for yes, and you can see that it's a pit right here. So this is just a simple program right now. So first we have to with any learning about any computer science and some of the basics. So in this case, you're just gonna go with printing statements. So in Java, in order to print statements, there's a special technique that we have to use called system that out that print in with parentheses. And inside the parentheses are what we want the computer to print out. So in this case, you can see two examples right here. System that out that putting hello and system that out that putting 12. So if you were to type this into the program, then you'll see that it will just print out hello 
and 12. And, you, and using print link with LN, it printed print out the statements to two separate lines. Does anyone have any questions right now? If you have any questions, you can just type in the chat or just unmute yourself and ask. So let's move on. So what happens if you want to print everything on the same line? So in the case from what I showed you before, you use that technique to actually print stuff on two separate lines. So in order to print stuff at the same line, you could just not include the LN. So in this case, you just do that print, hello, and that print 12. And you'll see that if you actually input it into a program, it will just print out hello 12. And so let's do some practice, uh, do a practice question based on that. So the, this question asks if you could print out, out your age, name, and favorite color on three separate lines. So in order to actually do this code, we can do, use it in Eclipse right here. This program allows you to actually write code and then run it. And you can see here that I separated the program into five different chunks of code which are called methods. And that's something we can talk about like, in the future. So just know that each chunk of code allows you to have a specific code to do a certain task. So in this case, I have five questions that are separated into five chunks of code right here. So you know, the first question asks you to print out your age, name, and favorite color on three separate lines. Does anyone have any idea how we can print out your age? Okay, first start with the, the statement, the, uh, the system that L that prints LN. Yeah, so what Raymond said, you could do system that L that print link. Since we want to print it on three separate lines, we have to use LN with the age. And if you want to print them all on the same line, we could just delete the LN here. So what age are you, Raymond? 15. So if you want to print out that the age is 15, you could just have 15 right here and end it off of something called a semicolon. So in Java, every single time you have a line of code, you always have to end the code with something called a semicolon, which is just this punctuation mark. If you don't end it, then a computer won't know that this line of code has been completed. And if you try to run it, the computer won't be happy and throw an error or a bug which is just something that you do not want. So this tells you the age. So does anyone else know how to print out your name? Yeah, William? You, you can say system out print line mm -hmm. and your name and then a semicolon. Yeah. So in this case, since we William answer, you do system that out that print line and then William. Notice how when I type in William, I put quotation marks because unlike fifteen, William is not a number. So if you if I just put the word William right here and try to run a code, you can see that the program tells you William is not a variable or like something that the computer knows. Since William is a word, we have to put quotation marks around William. But since 15 is a number, you do not have to put quotation marks around 15. So good job. And let's end off with favorite color. Does anyone want to give me their favorite color? Yeah, William, you want to give me your favorite color? Oh yeah, someone say as in, in the chat blue. So in this case, we do system that out that print in blue. So do you think I need to add quotation marks around the word blue or should I just, or can I just leave it like 15? So if I do something like this, do you think that will cause anything? Yeah. Like what Raven said, since blue is a word, we do need to put quotation marks around it. So any words that we want the computer to print out, make sure to have quotation marks around the word. So in this case, if we run it, you can see that printout 15, William, and blue. 
So good job, everyone. And if you hear the examples in this case for me, I print out that my name is Rachel. I am 18 years old and my favorite color is also blue. And I added extra words to it just so people know what each thing I print down really means. Okay, so after going through printing, we have to actually talk about data types. Data types are like blocks in Roblox or even Minecraft or even like letters in the alphabet. Like these are the building blocks of programming. So in order to actually start with data types, there's basically there like five data types that I'm talking about right here. There's something called integers, which are int in, in programming, and they're basically integers. So like numbers like one, two, three, four, five. And then there's also data types like doubles. And the things are in parentheses are basically what we type inside the computer. So doubles are any number that has a decimal point. So for example, a double can be 4.5 and a double can even be 4.0. Even though four is an integer, the minute you add a decimal point, it becomes a double and not an integer anymore. And floats are also um, just like numbers with decimal points. And the main difference between a double and a float is that doubles can have more numbers as the small point than floats. But in Java, we mainly use doubles. So in this case, like for this class, just know every time I ask for a double, we basically talk, like every time we ask for a decimal number, we're basically talking about doubles. And then there's something called characters or char. And characters are basically like a letter or a symbol. And you can tell something is a character if we add one quotation mark around it. And strings are basically any type of word or any like combination of characters. For example, in the previous question, we were talking about William. William is a string. And you can know something's a string because it has two quotation marks around the word. And blue is also a string. So just basically a, like a word or a group of characters. And what's special about Java is that in order to actually declare something called variables, you have to use this format. So this, the first format is the type, the name, and then the value of that variable. So in this case, since we, if you want to declare a variable called number with the value 10, you know that since 10 is an integer, it's going to have the type int. So I and T. So here's a bunch of examples. So int number equals 10 basically tells the computer that you made something called number that has a value of 10 and it's the type int. And then if you want to make a some if you want a decimal number like 5.5, you know that is a double. So in this case, you made a decimal a number called decimal num with a value of 5.5 that is a double. And you can see that you have a char called letter. And you know it's a char since it has two like one quotation mark instead of two that's in string. Like the name can be any name you choose, but just make sure that the, you always put the type before the name in so that the computer knows what type it is. If you use something like int number equals 10.1 and you try to do, and you mismatch the type, then the computer won't be happy and will tell you, oh, you can't do that. Make so make sure that the type you put for the value matches what value you actually want. So the minute you put 10.0, it's not going to be an integer anymore. It will be a double. So right here. Make sure to declare your data type in Java when making new variable. So there's a bunch of programming languages out there, just like there's a lot of foreign languages. And you, like in some programming languages, you might not need to ask to declare the data type. You might, yeah, so you might not need to have int before the name of your variable, but in Java, you have to have the data type. And what we talked about in the first problem, like semicolons are very important in Java. So make sure to end your statement with semicolon every single time. If you forget one semicolon in a very, very long program, the whole program will not work and you're just gonna spend like 10 minutes trying to find that missing semicolon. So you do not wanna do that. Okay, so here's something special in programming. So if you have a variable, say like num, 
that is an integer, you can increase it or decrease it by one using plus plus or minus minus. So in this case, you have a variable called num and you set it equal to four. If you do num plus plus with a semicolon and then you print out the num, you will see that it prints out five. So plus plus will just increase something by one and you do minus minus, you just decrease it by one. Using this is very useful if you're trying to find like the number of turns in a video game. So then you don't have to do like num plus equal, like num is equal to num plus one. So you can just do plus plus. This is a good way to keep track of turns in a video game when they like even keep track of points. Does anyone have any questions so far? Also notice how in the system that out that print, I did not put quotation marks around num. Because if I do put quotation marks around num, then it will just print out num and not actually the value of num. So if you put the variable name, you do not have to put quotation marks. And that's how you distinguish between like an actual um, sentence or what you want to print out versus the value of something. So moving on, now we talked about like those five data types, like doubles, int, floats, strings, and chars, but there's something special called booleans in, in programming. So booleans have two values, either true or false. And in order to make a boolean variable, it's the same thing with all the other data types. So you first declare that it's a boolean by using boolean, and then you put the name, and then you set it equal to a true or false value. So this can be useful if you're trying to see like, like if the player won in the game. So you could just make a boolean, win and you can set it to false if the player did not win and you can set it to true if the player won the game. So in this case, I just made a boolean called is raining and I set it to true to show that it is raining right now, but it could also change it to false to show that it's not raining. So you could change the name of the boolean to any name you want to show that it's the true value of something. So here's the second question. We want to declare a string and a boolean. So I go back to Eclipse. Does anyone want to tell me how to declare a string? You could type in the chat, um, raise your hand or unmute yourself. Or if you're just super confused right now, have no idea what I just said, you can also tell me to explain it more and I'll go over it again. Okay, then I'll go over again. So remember how in order to actually declare a string, we have to first put the string type. So I can just go over declaring a string. So a string, remember, is just a word or like a combination of characters. So since we want to declare a string, we had to actually tell the computer that we want a string. So in this case, we could just type in string and then we set and then we give the name of the string. So in this case, since we want, say, a string of name, we just do string name is equal to, and then you could tell the computer it's actually a string by using two quotation marks right here. So say I want to make a variable called name with my name. So I could just do string name is equal to Rachel. And then I could tell the computer I finished this statement by using a semicolon. So then this is how you declare a string. So do you guys want to help declare a boolean? It's basically this exact same thing as a string, but instead of string, it's a boolean. And remember, booleans only have true and false values. Yeah, so what do you mean to say? Boolean name is equal to false. Okay, one thing you have to be careful about is since we already made a string with the word name, you do not want to reuse the same um, name, basically, for your second variable. Because or else you see something like this, saying, oh, you have two different 
you have two different variables with the same name, and that will make the computer confused about which uh, variable you're talking about. So in this case, we could change the Boolean, the name of the Boolean to something else. What should we change it to? Any ideas? It can be any name. Rachel? Yeah, you can change it to my name, Rachel. Hey, also notice how Boolean has a lowercase b, while string has an uppercase s. So strings are special, and they're the only data type that starts with a capital letter. And Booleans and doubles and ints all start with lowercase letters. So capitalization is very important in, in computer science or in programming. So the minute you capitalize something, or you like keep it on lowercase, then the whole value chain. So in this case, if you have Rachel, if I change Rachel to name of a capital N, these two are completely different variables. So in this case, if you want to have a name and like this, like both be called name, but you keep one capitalized, then that's fine. But since we don't want to do that, we just want to call it Rachel. So in this case, we have a string called name with the value Rachel, and then we have a boolean. Rachel with the value false. So that's how you declare any web, any variable. So like if you want to declare an integer, you use the word int, and then you put name, say like age, and then say yeah, since I'm 18, I put int eight, age equals 18. So that's the same thing for any type data type that you want to do. So if it's a Boolean, you put Boolean. If it's an int, you put int. If it's double, you put double. If it's a char, you put char. So anyone have any questions right now? If not, let's move on. But remember, if you're confused about anything, I'll always repeat it or rephrase it so that everyone knows. So in this case, I have a string called subject and it has the value math. And I also have a Boolean called good, which is true. So in this case, I can say that math is good. Keep moving on. And it would, it would just be boring if we just have a bunch of variables, a bunch of values in the computer, because like, what kind of game is that? So you have this something called conditionals or if else statements, where we tell the computer to only do something if this is true. So to do that in Java, there's something called an if else statement. So if statements are in this form, so you have first have an if, parentheses with inside the condition, you want to check if it's true or not, and then brackets to in case like the code that only happens if the condition is true. So in this case, I have something called if three is greater than four, then you print out math is hard. But since three is not greater than four and this condition comes out to be false, then this will not do anything. So if the condition is false, then whatever is inside the curly bracket will not happen. But if the condition is true, then it will do whatever is inside these brackets. And then there's something called if else statements. So the else statement, it's an add-on to the if statement. So if the condition inside the if statements is false, then, it will, then whatever is inside the else statement will happen. So in this case, since three is not greater than four, then it will just go to the else statement and print out math is easy. So does anyone have any questions about if else statements? Yeah, William? What if I type four is greater than five? Will it say math is hard? Um, if you type four is greater than five, so in, if you um, replace three is greater than four with four is greater than five, since you know that four is not greater than five, it will not print out math is hard because that is not correct. But if you switch it and say four, if four is greater than three, it will print out math is hard because four is greater than three. So whatever is true inside the if statement will do whatever is inside the first curly bracket. But if it's false, it will go to the else statement. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, conditionals are very hard to understand at first. So if you have any questions later on, go always tell me to stop and I'll repeat or like just explain this in a different way. 
Okay, so let's actually use conditionals. So in this question three, we declare two integers and then use a conditional, so like an if else statement to check whether or not the two integers are equal. So let's go to Eclipse again and go to question three. Does anyone want to help me declare two integers together? Yeah, William, I saw you on mute. So do you have me declare two integers? I'll say zero and one. Yeah, but before we just put zero and and one, we have to declare the variable first. So do you remember the keyword for integer? Uh, int. Yeah. yeah, so int. So what do you want the first variable name to be? Mm, bigger. Okay, what did you say? Mm, I would say five. Um. Yeah, but remember you want the name. So if you want the int value to be five, so make, if you want it to be five, make sure that you actually put in the values five and not just five. So if you want the first integer name to be five, we can do that and just set it and then do int five is equal to a value. So what value do you want five to have? Uh, four. Yeah, so you have something like int five is equal to four. So in this, in this practice question, it's fine to have something like this, but remember in the future, if you write super complicated code, you don't want to do something like with the like names that might be challenging for other people. So if someone sees this and be like, int five is equal to four, they might get confused. So now for the second integer, do you have a name for the second one? It could be any name. It doesn't have to, it could be like the second name could be like rabbit or even ice cream. So do you have any name you want to put? William. Yeah, William. So int William is equal to what value do you want me to put? Eight. Eight. So here you have two integers, five and William. And now we need to compare them whether or not five is equal to William. So do you, do you guys remember how to compare two values? If five is yeah, so make sure when you check the condition, you put it inside the parentheses. So if five is equal, equal to William. Notice how when you check whether or not two integers are equal, you use these two equal signs instead of one equal sign. Now, if you use one equal sign, that's if to assign a value to a variable. So in this case, since you're not checking to see if five is equal equal to four, you can do five is equal to four. And if you, in this case, you want to compare two, two values, you have to use two equal signs. So if five is equal equal to William, just means if five had the same value as William, then you want to do something. So in this case, you can use two curly brackets right here to have something that the computer would do if it's actually equal. So since we want to know if five is equal equal to, like if five and William has the same value, you could just tell the computer to print out right here, print and in a new line that five and William is equal. And do anyone know how else to do, if it's not equal to each other, that keyword? Else. Yep. So if so, else, and make sure to use another two brackets to have the code inside. So like you, if this condition is equal, it will do whatever's inside the two brackets. And if it's not equal, it will do whatever's inside the two brackets of the else statement. So in this case, you just print out, just send that out, that print link, five and William are not equal. And then make sure to always end it with a semicolon. And if we run this code, it will just print out five and William are not equal since five have the value four and William have the value eight. And if you want to print out five and William is equal, then we could just change five to eight. And you know that eight is equal to eight. So if you run this again, it'll print out five and William is equal. But since in this case, we have five equals four, it will print out five and one are not equal. Yeah, 
Does anyone have any questions about if else statements? Yeah, William? Uh, and that it says when we compare two numbers is and see if they are equal, we use two equal signs. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any three equal signs or four equal signs? <laughs> no, there's there's only one equal sign or two equal signs. So three equal. If you put three equal signs, the computer will be angry and tell you what is this. Delete this equal sign. So the maximum number of equal signs will just be is just two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you always know if you did something wrong, if it underlines in red down here, and if you hover over it, it'll tell you what to do. So in this case, it'll just tell you to delete it. So I could delete it. So if I show you this example, I have two integers. One of them is called num, and the other one is called num2, because I'm not very good at naming stuff. So in this, the first integer number is 64, and the second one is 31. And, if, and we're doing the same thing, basically. So if num is equal or equal to num2, then we print out they are equal. And but if they're not equal, then we just print out they are not equal. Okay, moving on. Okay, again, this is just to check in if the computer knows how to do something that it could that we set before we actually like play a game or something. So there's something called scanner which is allows the user, like so a player, to interact with the computer. So I'll show you what a scanner is right now. So the scanner class right, allows the user to interact with the program and to actually use this class, or like this technique, or the, like something like, it's very similar to like a mod pack or something, you have to import it or download it into your program. So in order to actually input it on the top of your code, you have to type in exactly this, import java.util.scanner with a semicolon. So if I go to Eclipse right here, scroll up all the way, you have to input it before you have any code. So in this case, you just do import java.util.scanner. Yeah, William, you have a question? What does util mean? Okay, right, so util is the name of the package where you got scanner from. So it's so some people in the past decided to make a folder called util and then they put the scanner class inside that folder. So like all of these folders are uh, you could just Search it up online, you can see that. But this is basically a bunch of names. So if someone decides to not name it util and name it like apples or something, then you just change it to Java, the apples, the scanner. So just a random name decided to make it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now since after we actually import the scanner class to our code, we want to use them. So to use it, you have to do something called this. Oops. So the first thing you have to do is actually, it's like declaring a variable, but you have to first name like the type of variable. So in this case, you want to make a scanner. So on the bottom, you can see it has something called scanner input equals new scanner system that in. Since a scanner is basically a class with a bunch of different um, things you can do with it. So in this case, we have the name, we just name it input. And you can see on the second one, I named the scan. You can name it anything you want. You can always name it William. You can na name it um, Raymond. You can name it anything you want. And then after you name it, you have to set equal to new scanner system that in. The new scanner system that in is just basically what you have to write for the scanner class. You don't really have to worry about why right now, but it's just the way to actually use scanner. And if you ever take like more Java classes in the future, it'll, like your teacher will probably explain more about why you use this phrase. So after you make the scanner to actually use it, then you have something here. So you see how I have, so scanner has a bunch of methods right here. There's something called next, next line, next in, next double, next boolean, all of this. And to use it, you have to actually 
replace scanner name with the name that you made the scanner to be in the same example in the previous one. If I name a scanner with input, then instead of saying scanner name that next, I do input that next. And the next slide, I'll tell you what all of these random words actually mean. So right here is next and next slide. So these are two things called methods or like two different techniques that you can actually use the scanner class with. So for example, right here, if you do scanner input equals new scanner, so you make a new scanner called input and then you print out to the user, enter your first name. And then if you could do something called input that next line, it will take whatever value that the user actually input it and store it inside the variable called string and the name first name. Like the variable first name that has a value of string. And if you then print out the, um, if you then print out first name, it will print out whatever the user input it. So this is a cool way to actually ask the user for value. So like you can do this to make a bunch of usernames and passwords. So instead of enter your first name, you can do enter your password and stuff like that. And the difference between next and next line is that next allows you to take the input up to like when the user click, clicks the space bar and next line takes the input until the user presses enter. So but in this case, we tend to use um, next since we want to ask for one word, but you can also use next line. So in this case, I use next line, but we mainly use next. Does anyone have any questions before we move on to int and next double? This might be super confusing right now. So if you have any questions, you can just ask. Okay, so along with next and next line, there's something called next int, next double. And they're basically the same thing as next and next line, but the only difference is that whatever value the user enters either has, has to be an integer value or has to have a double value. It cannot be a bunch of words. So example, if you have a scanner called scan this time and you ask the user to enter your age, you're gonna use next int to store the value that the user enters into the age variable. So for example, if you look right here in this black box here, if you run this code, it will print out enter your age and then the user can enter say 90, then, you, then the value of age will be 90. And if you want to have like ask for oh, how much something costs, you do next double because like the cost of something usually has a decimal point, right? So in this case, the user will have to enter like say $4.50, so 4.50, and they will just store that within whatever variable that you declare on the left. So you know how in this case, I have something called next int. If I suddenly decide to put that I am 4.9 years old, the computer won't be happy and be like, you asked for integer and now you're giving me a decimal value. So if the user tried to input that, then the computer will throw an error or bug at the user and be like, this is not correct. So you had to enter another value. And then there's something called next boolean, which is just basically the same thing as int and double. It takes the value that the user inputs and stores it as a boolean. So in this case, if I ask, like, is it raining? The user has to put either true or false, since booleans only have two values. So you could use next boolean to get the value from like whatever that the user inputs and store it inside a variable. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, William? So next boolean, what if we, what if, well, we make one next boolean and we make another with a, with a different, like one says, is it raining is it, and it equals true. And what if you put another line that says, if, if it, it, is it raining what it, and it equals false, what would happen? Um, if you put another line, so if you have two right values, if it's not raining and if it is raining. So depending on what the user puts, say if it's 
if you say that it is raining, right, then the part that says it ra is raining will happen. But if the part that says if you set it to false will not happen. So it depends on what value you put it has. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, if it doesn't tell me, because sometimes I don't make sense to myself either. So now let's actually use the scanner. So in this case, you're going to write a program that asks the user to input their name, age, and favorite color, and then we print it out. So let's go here. Does anyone remember how to, like, before you actually use the scanner, we have to make it. Does anyone remember how to make it? Yeah, William, you have your hand up? No, I don't. I don't. Hey, it's okay. So does anyone else remember how to make a scanner? Like you, could, you don't have to know the whole line. If you just can know the beginning, it'll be fine. So before you name the scanner, like just like to click making an int value or string value, to make the scanner, you have to say what thing it is right now. So what should we call it? Yeah, input scanner, wait a minute. Um, I already imported on the top. So in order to actually make it, do you remember how to make it? It's very similar to making an int value. So in this case, it's int five equals four. Since you want to make a scanner, we have to say, tell the computer first that it's a scanner. Yeah, William? Yeah, William, you raise your hand. Uh, is this scanner or input equals new scanner system in? Yeah, yeah, good job. So you have to first tell the computer it's a scanner value. So and then you name it. Since William wants to name it input, you could name it anything. So technically, I can just name it Raymond if I want to. So I name scanner Raymond is equal to new scanner system that in. So in this case, every time you want to use the scanner, you always make sure to replace the name with Raymond. So first, we want to ask the user to input a name. So to print out something. Does anyone remember how to print something out? Mm. It's like all the way in the front. You can see it right here. System, system out print line. Yep. The system that out that print line and you want them to print in the name. So enter your name. And once we do that, we want to use the scanner to get whatever value they enter. So what data type should the name be? Like should it be an int, a boolean, a double? Like what data type do you guys think? Do you guys remember the data type for name? String? Yep, string. Since remember name is basically a group of letters. So it, since it's a group of letters, it's going to be a string. So they could say, so you could just name the string name so that everyone knows what it is. So string name is going to be equal to, now we have to get the scanner value. So I'll just do the first one for you guys. So in order to actually get the value from the scanner, you have to put the name of the scanner. So in, in this case, we name it Raymond. And you use the word period, and then we have to use next. Or you can even use next line, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, we're gonna use next, and, a, and then a, a semicolon. So in this case, whatever value you put in, it's gonna allow you to have the name, and then you're gonna store it inside the string called name. So after that, we actually want to print out the name, because you want, right here, you want to print it. So it's really the same thing as enter your name, but in this case, it's just going to be system that out that print thing. Then you want to type in your name is, and then you add it to the name. Right? This addition sign combines whatever's in here with whatever's inside the name. 
So in this case, if I enter my name as Rachel, then the name variable will have the value Rachel. So in this case, you just have your name is Rachel. So does anyone have any idea how to ask the user to input an age? Yeah, William? Uh, scanner scanner red equals new scanner system and system out print line. What is your favorite color string name equals ring? No, no, for the age. So remember before you actually want to print out or like even get the value, you have to first declare what data type the age is. So like what data type do you think age should be? Like a it, double? It, it, and yeah, yeah. the int, and then you have to name it. So in this case, you could just name it age, but you can name it anything you want. So then we set int age is equal to, do you remember how to get an int value from the scanner? Mm. No. Okay, that's okay. Does anyone else have any ideas? It's very similar to how you get this, the string name. But instead of next, we use something else that we talked about in the slide, like this one. Yeah, it's one of these. Which one do you think it is? Um, next thing. Um, yep, it's next thing. So remember, you first put the name of the variable of the scanner, which is Raymond again, and Raymond, the next int. Since you, the age is the int value, the a method should also be int. So if, if you decide to change a to a double, then you use next double. Okay, so moving on to favorite color. But before we do that, let's print out the age. The system that out, that print, find your age is, and then plus sign with your age. And don't forget a semicolon. So now let's print out the favorite color. Does anyone know how we should begin? It's exactly the same thing as this one. So what do we do first? Oops. Okay. Right so in order to make a favorite color, what should we start first? It, it's almost exactly the same as the name one. Hmm. So first have the type. What type should color be? String? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a string because color is a, is a, what color we enter is going to be a word. We're not going to, if someone asks you, what's your favorite color? We're not going to just be like five. Five is my favorite color. So it's going to be like something like blue, red, yellow. So that's going to be a string since it's a word. So string, and then we're going to name it color because it's going to be our favorite color. And then we do Raymond uh, next. Every time we, the type of this is a string, we always use next or next line. We don't use next int because that's only for ints. We don't use next double because that's only for doubles. And we don't use next boolean since that's only for booleans. So in this case, after that, we want to print out print line. Yeah. Color is, and then the plus sign color. Whatever value color is will be printed out along with this value right here. So we we run it. We have something cool like this. So it tells you to enter your name. What name should we put, everyone? Rachel. Yeah. So enter your name. I am Rachel. So your name is Rachel. And then it will ask you for. Oh shoot. Remember how we have something here, enter your name? We forgot to add a print statement that's asking for what is your age and your favorite color. So that's my bad. So in order to do that, just copy and paste this right here and this right here and change name to age and change right here to favorite color. Um, 
I had to add this or else like you can see right here, there's no way else for me to enter anything and the user will be confused. So I do it again, enter my name, Rachel, and then enter your age. What age should I put everyone? 18. Yeah, 18. And you say your age is 18 and then enter your favorite color. What everyone favorite color? Red. Yeah, red. So then it says your favorite color is red. So you can see like right here, scanner is very cool and allows you to use it to allow like the player me to actually enter value. So like say when you want to customize the character in the video game, you can use scanners to customize the character. And get yeah, something cool to actually use. So in this case, um, if you want to have a different value, say like instead of asking age, like before, if you want to ask, oh, is it raining? So just remember that we had to change into age to Boolean, raining. And then instead of using next int, we have to use next Boolean, basically. And then here, yeah, we enter the value. So bam, we have something very long right here. So in this case, instead of naming my scanner Raymond, I name it S because I'm very lazy and don't want to type in a bunch of letters. So right here, so first you enter out your name and then you use S dot next. So whatever value you have in here will be stored inside the variable name. And then right here, you ask the player to enter, oh, what is your age now? And since age is gonna be an integer, unless someone wants to put their four and a half, then you could put it as a double. But in this case, I just want your whole age. So you're gonna do int age is equal to S dot next int. So whatever age you put, will be stored inside this variable called age. And then you, you could ask and see your favorite color. Since color is a string, you could do s stand next. And then you could set it to the word color. And then after you do that, so in this case, I print it all, all out at the end, but before I print out one by one, but that's fine. So then I print out name and then plus thing to the whatever value here. Make sure that that's the same name string of the variable. And then so name, and if I set the name to say like William, it is print out name William. And the age says if I put in eight, that it will be age eight. And then color is putting your favorite color. So what's special about scanners is that you could just keep running it like as many times as you want and just print different values, say William and eight. And then William's favorite color. Let's just put purple. That's cool. And then you can see you could print out like all of these. Just keep running it and you keep be doing it as many times as you want. And that's what's cool about scanners because you could just reset all those values every single time. And since we run out of time, we could just move on to all the way to the end right here. So um, I skipped a bunch of other topics like say iteration, basically loops. And that's loops. Let me just quickly talk about loops. You say if you want to do something multiple times, you don't actually want to copy and paste the code. Like, so you want to do, you want to, you want the computer to print out like ice cream ten times. You don't want to copy and paste things to something out ice cream like so many times because that's a lot of work. So you could do something called while loops. So in this case, while loops is similar to an if statement. So while the condition inside the parentheses is true then it will do whatever's inside the brackets. So, and just, yeah, William? Uh, in Java, is there forever loops like in Scratch? Yeah, this, they are forever loops. But sometimes if you have a forever loop, like unlike Scratch, forever loops, like the computer does not really like forever loops. You'll just break your program. Because if you have something run forever and ever and ever, then you can't do anything else. So in Java and some other programming languages, we tend to like loops that stop at some point. But you can make it forever loop if you feel like it. So here's an example. So you say you have an int ice cream and you set it to four. So while the ice cream value is greater than zero, inside the while loop, you decrease the value of ice cream by one, and then you print out you ate an ice cream and now you have blank ice cream left. So in this case, you would just print out over here, the output, if you run this code, it will just print out you ate an ice cream, you have three ice cream left, 
then it keeps going until you have zero ice cream left. And after that, since ice cream is zero, the wire loop will stop and then you'll be happy. So this we can don't do. So say if we have a, for, uh, a um, forever loop. So if you forget to decrease the wire loop, like the into ice cream by one, so you say something like ice cream is equal to six, I say five, right? And while ice cream is greater than zero, you just want to print out system that out the print in ice cream. Notice how in this case I forgot to decrease ice cream value by one. So ice cream will always equal to five. And if you run this code, you have something like this. Or you have the computer freeze on you because it's always ice cream. Big question, five. Yeah, see, so you have something like a, gonna be a forever loop. So the computer sense in this case, it will always run since ice cream is always greater than five. So just keep printing out ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. And since it's a forever loop, you see that nothing prints out because sometimes my computer can't handle it and it won't print out anything because the computer, the program knows that you, this while loop never ends. So in order to fix that, you just do ice cream minus minus, which is just basically decreasing the ice cream value by one. So if you run it this time, it will just print out ice cream, it will print out ice cream five times, basically. So always make sure that if you use while loops that you, find a way to make it such that this condition here is gonna be false sometime in the future. Or you get something like a forever loop and that's very, and the computer won't be happy. Yeah, William? Yes. Yeah, and you raise your hand. I don't know if you have a question, Wanda. Okay, so that's why loops. And since we don't have time, I can just show you the answer for this one. If you want to make a while loop to print out the numbers from one to six, could first start out with making the value called num and you set it to one. And then you want to keep printing until it's gonna be greater than six. So just keep, if you run this code, it will just print out one, two, three, four, five, and then, and six. And the minute it's gonna be equal to seven, you know that seven is not less than what equal to six. So this becomes false and whatever set the brackets won't happen. And then this, the while loop would just stop. And since we ran out of time, we can't really play with Maze Runner, but that Maze Runner was basically that X, this game that I talked about before. And if you run it, you could print out a bunch of stuff like this. So if you look at the code, you could just see that the Maze Runner is basically just a bunch of if and else statements. So if direction you put is equal to R, or like that's right, then it does it moves right. And if it's equal to left, it moves left, and if it's equal to up. So like once you actually start like getting familiar with Java, you can make simple games like this, just using a bunch of if else statements right here. See, like all of these if else statements. And you see this map, map right here, that is just using a bunch of print link statements. I use one to print out this whole thing, and to print out this whole thing, and you see that all of these are just printing. But this is using a scanner. So whatever value I use here, we just store that value inside here. So you can use that scanner value to make it right here. And you know that I use a while loop because it will just keep turning, printing now without me having to replay this. And then we just keep printing until I either lost the game or I won the game. And then in the final slide, so I hope everyone enjoyed this Java lesson. I know it went very fast because I tried to get as much information in one hour. But if you are interested in Java classes for any other programming classes, Bay Coding Club do have some classes available that start in September. Or if you want to do any summer classes right now, like week three, if you want to learn more about Java. All right, yeah. Thank you, Rachel, for the presentation and for talking to our case. So right now, do you have any other questions since you guys are warmly attended and get involved in it? I do see some of them maybe have a lot of experience about this. 
So would you please do me a favor if you want to read uh, our teacher ratio. So from one to five, from um, one, uh, five is very good or best. So what, what, how many score you want to give uh, Rachel teacher? All right, you can tape it on the chat. And then I saw, um, oh, wow, you got a lot of five. Oh my, okay. Oh, Alex Zhao gave 4.5. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, any other questions about our Bay Coding Club? Oh, you gave an, get another five. Congratulations, Rachel. Okay, um, so if you have any questions about um, enroll any of the class of Bay Coding Club, just let us know. And we do open Q&A right now. If you have questions, you, ha you can open your mic. And Rachel, we get some question from the registration the parents get. So, um, so there's one question asked this. So uh, 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 what age do you think is suitable for learn uh, the Java uh, with the, this class? For this class, um, you can start learning coding at any, any language if you have a passion or just have an interest in it. So usually when people actually start learning to code, they start with Python, so it's, a really, it's an easier language. But ready for Java, you can be any age. You can either be like six years old or you could be 20 years old. It doesn't really matter. You just have a passion or you're like willing to learn, then you can take the class. Yeah, I know the parents are really concerned about their mathematics basics. So what do you view about um, the mathematics basics level between the coding? And um, as you can tell, like in this whole presentation, like this crash course on Java, which I went pretty fast, that there was that isn't really a lot of math involved in like the basics of coding unless you want to have that math. If you want the computer to do very complex stuff, like say like artificial intelligence, which can involve a lot of math, you don't really need that much math to actually learn how to code. Okay. I do get a question from a, a parent to ask, curious about your MIT applications. So uh, they, they ask what kind of computer programs you, um, you uh, attend before you apply for MIT? So for my MIT application, um, I put in my robotics experience. Like I was in first robotics and my team won a lot of awards and went to champs. And I also talked about um, also, I was also the president of the Girls Who Code Club, which we used to promote gen more like gen like more females in STEM. But I also talked about like other activities I was in that's not involved around computer science because I also did research in high school. I did some like astrophysics research that studied the ages and masses of planets, and I did use Python to do that research. So I guess it, it is kind of computer science. I did something like that. All right. So uh, as we all know that uh, computer uh, coding we are, we are teaching at Bay Coding Club, we are not only teach them coding. So we always want our kids to have their creativities. So other than the hard skills as a computer uh, engineer, so um, what do you have your um, hobbies as you prepare for go to the university? So some hobbies I had was like, it's not always good in high school to just have overwhelm yourself with a bunch of academic extracurriculars. So I did have a, I do a lot in my school's baking club. I like to bake and I also like to read. So I sometimes was in like the book club at my school. So we talked about reading. So it's always good to balance yourself between academics and your other passions like don't just focus on getting into college and just doing all of these like academic teams or club like you will su succeed at something we are passionate about it but you also just do something to rewind yourself just like do something fun all right thank you so much so so we we want to give any the chance for the um the parents or the kids if you want you can open your mic any, uh, any other questions than this? You can 
directly open your mic if you have questions, okay? All right, uh, if you don't have the question anymore, I believe we are good to go for today. And uh, welcome to, yeah, attend our Bay Coding Club. On September, we are, we are about to open our onset place at Copertino, California. And uh, welcome to visit our uh, school set. And also we have a lot of, lot of uh, uh, fine clubs like robotics clubs, Minecraft clubs, and uh, Roblox clubs, game design clubs online. Just, you can join us all around the world. So yeah, we have uh, the students all around the world already. So yeah, join us and um, from online either or to the onset at Cupertino, California. All right, thank you so much for today, Rachel. Uh, and thank you so much all to attend our Bay Coding Club webinar.